Okay, now we're going to show some formulas to actually solve a 2x2 two two matrix game. But before we do that, I want to point out that uh, for again, well, for a 2x2 two two matrix, there are a set of formulas. For a general m by n matrix, there are still ways to solve them, but what we're going to have to do is we're going to convert those to equivalent linear programming problems, and then we'll use techniques developed for linear programming to solve those. So to solve the higher order matrix games, we're going to resort to linear programming. But in this video, and in the next one, or the next couple, we're just going to look at 2x2 two two matrix games. It's actually possible to take some M by N, you know, larger, higher dimension matrix games, and actually reduce those to 2x2 two two matrix games. So we'll look at that as well before we jump on to the more, the more general techniques using linear programming. So here is the, the formulas, again, without proof. But what it says is, for a non-strictly determined game, so we've got the matrix game M with entries A, B, C, D. It says the optimal strategies P star and Q star and the value of the game are given by the following formulas. It says to get the probabilities P1 star and P2 star, we take the entries D minus C over capital D, and capital D is given at the bottom here, how to compute that. So we take D minus C over capital D. To get the second entry, we take A minus B over capital D. To get the probabilities for Q, little Q1 star, Q2 star, we do D minus B over capital D, A minus C over capital D, and the value is AD minus BC over D. So again, just a lot of symbol pushing at this point. But let's go ahead and let's solve our game So that we started off with. So again, you may ask yourself, uh, you know, if you're playing this matrix game, would you rather be the row player or the column player, or would it even matter at all? So, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate our value for capital D, and again, that's given by A plus D minus B plus C. You can actually show for a determined game, a game with a saddle value, that this value always equals zero. I'm not going to justify that, but I just want to point that out. So let me label again. This is A, B, C, and D. Okay, so if we substitute in our values, A is going to be 2, D will be 4, so you have 2 plus 4 minus uh, B plus C, so negative 3 plus negative 3. That's going to be 6 minus negative 6 when we simplify. And well, 6 minus negative 6 is going to give us positive 12. So that's going to be our value for capital D. And to get the value for P star, it says we take D minus C over capital D, and then we take A minus B over capital D. So if we simplify there, we would have 4 minus negative 3, so 4 minus negative 3 over 12. And then A minus B, we would have 2 minus negative 3 over 12, and if we compute that value, that's going to give us 7 over 12 and 5 over 12 for the probability for P star. I should say the strategies, the respective probabilities for the strategy associated with P star. And likewise, we can compute the, the probability for the strategies associated with Q star. So the formula there was D minus B over capital D. Should give myself a little more room here. And then we've got A minus C over capital D. So again, it's just a matter of substituting in values. So D will be 4. Let's see, so we've got 4 minus negative 3. Again, that's all divided by capital D, which we saw as 12. And then we have A, which is 2, minus C, which is going to be negative 3. Again, all over capital D, which is 12. And again, if we simplify, we actually get 7 over 12 and 5 over 12. So again, uh, it looks like the probabilities for both uh, P star and Q star are actually 
working out to be the same, the respective probabilities. Not necessarily going to happen all the time. The last thing we're going to do is compute the value of the game. And to get the value, again, we take AD minus BC over capital D. Well, we've already seen that the value for capital D is 12. So we'll take A times D, which will be 2 times 4, minus B times C, so negative 3 times negative 3. And if we compute that, that's going to be 8 minus, well, let's see, uh, negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give us positive 9 over 12. And if we reduce that, that's going to give us negative 1 over 12. Okay, so in summary, what does all this mean? What does all this mean? If I can uh, spit out some proper English here. So what it says is, it says that R's optimal strategy, P star, is given by 7 twelfths and 5 twelfths. So what that means is, it says, using some sort of random process, maybe like the colored marbles in an urn that we mentioned at the very beginning, or some sort of like, you know, spinner, uh, it says that R should choose row 1 with a probability of 7 twelfths and row 2 with a probability of 5 twelfths. Likewise, the optimal strategy for the column player, which is given by Q star, we actually found the same thing. Um, it says that the column player should choose the first column with a probability of 7 twelfths and the second column with a probability of 5 twelfths. Lastly, the value that we computed is negative 1 over 12. What that says is, it says that in the long run, it says that R's average loss will be 1 twelfth of a dollar per game. So R can expect to lose 1 twelfth of a dollar per game. While, and if you think about that, that means that the column player's uh, average gain, the column player will actually win one twelfth of a dollar on average. So since this doesn't equal zero, that tells us that it's not a fair game. And in this case, assuming you want to maximize your earnings, it says that you would pick to be the column player. You would want to be the column player in this game if you want to win money in the long run. So, again, maybe a little counterintuitive, right? Because in a way, it, it almost sort of looks fair, right? Um, in a way, it looks like there's a way for the row player to win, you know, $2 or $4. Um, the column player can win $3 or $3. So it almost seems like it's a fair game um, intuitively. Or I don't know, maybe your intuition told you that it's actually better to be the column player. I, I certainly wouldn't guess the value, you know, right off the top of my head, but it actually turns out in this case it is better to be the column player. So again, nothing too crazy here once you know the formula is just sort of grinding it down. Uh, in the next video what I'm going to talk about will be known as recessive rows and columns and what that is it shows you how to take, in certain cases at least, how to take a higher order matrix game and reduce it to a 2 by 2 matrix game so, so we can apply our same formulas.